Let's look at rates of change. A really good example when we're talking about rates of change is driving in a car and how fast you are driving. So for example, let's say that you drove 100 miles and it took you two hours to drive those 100 miles. So if I do the math here, that means that I want an average of 50 miles per hour. That is my average rate of change. Now, if I wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change, all I need to do is to look down at my speedometer, or maybe your speedometer has a number on it, and I can see that at any given point in time, at an instant, I can look and see that that speed is equal to, say, 52 miles per hour. So instantaneous is a moment in time. Average is gonna be averaged over a period of time. The nice thing about calculus is it does instantaneous rates of change really, really well. And it does it with the derivative, so f prime of x. If I wanted to find an average, it would be a lot like finding a slope. So this would be the change in f over the change in x, or we could say f of, say, x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Hopefully this looks like just your good old slope formula, the change in y over the change in x. Let's take a look at some examples. In this example, we've got a ball that's been thrown upward, and we know that when we throw a ball upwards, it's gonna come back down to the ground. So if I draw a ball here, I'm gonna throw it upwards at time is equal to zero. So I've got time across my horizontal axis. The height from the ground is my position, and that's gonna be on my vertical axis. So if we follow the path of this ball um, over time, even though it's going straight up and straight down, I can track it in this parabola given by that function. So first, we want to find the average velocity. Velocity is speed, the average velocity um, on the time interval. Let's do three to five, so three to five um, seconds. This is feet per second. Well, to find the average velocity, I need to use the formula that I have up here. My function is s of t, so my average velocity is going to be given by uh, s of 5 minus s of 3 divided by 5 minus 3. Let me give myself a little more room and we can finish doing the math. Uh, let's do s of 5. So s of 5, I'm just going to do that separately here. That's going to be negative t squared, so negative 5 squared plus 10 times 5. So that's going to be negative 25 plus 50, which is going to be 25. Remember, that is our distance from the ground. That's 25 feet. I'm going to do the same thing for 3. When I put 3 in, I get negative 3 squared plus 10 times 3. So that's going to be negative 9 plus 30, which is 21 feet. So now I'm ready to put my average velocity together. Let's put both of those back up here. So this is equal to 25 minus 21 divided by 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. 25 minus 21 is 4. So I get 4 over 2, or we get 2 feet per second. That's my average velocity. Now 5 happens to be right here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 is about here. Notice that between 3 and 5, I do have a slope that is positive, which means that between 3 and 5, it is increasing in height, positive 2 feet per second. Let's do an instantaneous velocity next. Next, we're going to find the instantaneous velocity. Let's do the instantaneous velocity at time equals 3. Well, to find an instantaneous velocity, that would be at this moment in time here at 3. I am really looking for the slope of that tangent line, which is kind of like this one. So I'm looking for the slope of that tangent line. So I need to find the derivative first of my function. So I'm looking for the derivative of that function. And as I take the derivative, negative t squared, its derivative is negative 2t. 
the derivative of 10t is equal to 10. So I've got my derivative there. Now I just need to plug in 3. So I've got s prime of 3, which is my instantaneous velocity. That's going to be negative 2 times 3 plus 10, which is equal to Four. This is again a velocity, so it's a speed. This is going to be four feet per second. Notice how four is steeper than two. If we take a look back at our graph, sure enough, the tangent line that's in green has a steeper slope than that secant line, the line that goes through the points at three and at five. Let's look at another example. In this example, we are looking at a changing temperature of an object after so many minutes. It is given to us in this function, 3 eighths t squared minus 15 t plus 180. This is actually something that's used a lot in forensic science, but we've got just a nice simple example here. For this one, our first question is, at what rate is the temperature changing at t equals 10 minutes? Now we're just given a single moment in time. That means that we are looking for an instantaneous change. So the instantaneous change is going to be the derivative. I'm going to start by finding the derivative of capital T, and that's going to be the derivative of my function here. So I'm going to bring the 2 out in front, so that's going to be 3 eighths times 2, and I've got t to the first now, minus 15. Um, 180's derivative is 0. So this is 2 cancels with with the 8 we get 3 fourths. So 3 fourths t minus 15. This is a formula for that instantaneous rate of change in degrees Celsius per minute. Okay, let's go ahead and look for um, this rate of change. So t prime at 10 minutes. So now I'm going to plug in 10. So this is going to be 3 fourths times 10 minus 15. If I do the math here, this is 0.75 times 10. That makes my life just a little bit easier. I don't need to pull my calculator out. And we end up with 7.5 minus 15, which is negative 7.5. And I know that my units are degrees Celsius, so Celsius per minute. This tells me that the temperature is going down and the object is cooling at about 7.5 degrees per minute. For the second part of the question, we want to find an average rate of change on the interval 4, 10. Now whenever we're working on an interval, it means that we're working on the interval for the variable of input, and that is our time t. So we know that that represents 4 minutes to 10 minutes. I need to use that average rate of change formula, which is really my slope formula. So this is going to be the change in capital T over the change in lowercase t. So I want capital T for 10 minus capital T for 4 divided by 10 minus 4. I'm going to use my calculator to make quicker work of this. So putting both 10 and 4 into my function in my calculator gives me the values of 67.5 for 10 and 126 for 4. For that final answer, by taking 67.5 minus 126, so the change in temperature divided by the change in time, which was 6 minutes, we end up with negative 14.625. And this was the change in temperature, so degrees Celsius, per minute is our average rate of change on that interval 4 to 10. And again, it's negative so that we can see that it is cooling. I'll bet you're getting a lot better with these types of problems. Check back in for more of my videos. Thanks so much for watching.